There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high quality, grass fed, and grass finished beef, organic chicken, pork raised crate free, and wild caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high-quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at butcherbox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious. And all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips, for free in every order for a year. Plus, get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash etm and use code etm to choose your free offer and get $20 off. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, Right. For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. One of the key things that people need to know when purchasing a diamond is that it's a zero-sum game. If you're going to be overspending for a specific quality that you want you're going to have to sacrifice in other areas. And if you think you're getting a great deal by getting a larger diamond, that's probably because one of those other facets are problematic and you're not noticing that. So just make sure to look at all the four C's and make sure that your diamond is certified. You're listening to Millennial Money with award-winning money expert and serial entrepreneur, Shauna Come to Game where we flip the script on the old school approach to everything your parents never taught you about money. Each week, Shauna creates a safe space by talking with special guests from around the world about money wellness, entrepreneurship, traveling like a boss, and what makes millennials tick. Unique stories, trailblazing perspectives, tips, tricks, and everything there is to know about money. Find it all here as you uncover your money story and unlock the life you want to live. Pretty cool, right? Here's Shauna. Money expert, Indiana Hoosier, and burger aficionado. Whatever you're saving up for, a CD from Sandy Spring Bank lets you grow your savings at a guaranteed rate. Right now, earn interest at 4.5% APY on an 8-month CD special or 4.25% APY on a 14-month CD special. Learn more at sandyspringbank.com slash CD specials. Minimum opening deposit to earn the annual percentage yield is $500 for the 8-month CD special and $2,500 for the 14-month CD special. Member FDIC. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for tuning in. Just a quick reminder to head over to Apple Podcasts or the link in the show notes to leave us a five-star review. And don't forget to tell us your favorite tip to save money in December. We're going to be highlighting some of those reviews in just a couple of weeks And the reviews also help this show continue to grow. So I'm sending you a huge thanks in advance. Now, I have been excited about this episode for some time now. I I love talking about diamonds. I love learning insider tips and tricks. And Michael Fried is the CEO of Diamond Pro, which is an affiliate website that offers unbiased information and objective guides. So exactly what we need. He's a diamond expert, and in this episode, Michael shares what you need to know to save you time and money when shopping for a diamond. We talk about how you value a diamond, why you should buy a diamond online, and what to do if you want to upgrade your diamond, and of course, how to find the best deals. 
This is one of those episodes you need to send to all of your friends so we can all become wise diamond buyers. I'm so thrilled to bring you this conversation. I'm Shauna Compton Game. This is Millennial Money, and let's jump in. Well, Michael, I am so, so excited to have you on the podcast talking about one of my favorite subjects, diamonds. So thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's it's a lot of people's favorite uh, topic. <laughs> well, before we we dive into all things diamond, I'm just I'm super curious. How did you become a quote unquote diamond expert? Well, I started in the industry uh, actually part time while I was in college, and I worked my way up through the company. I was working on the manufacturing side, one of the largest uh, diamond cutters and polishers in the world. And I somehow ended up in sales and they sent me over to their Israel office where I spent about eight months just looking at diamonds, thousands of diamonds every day and evaluating their quality and their value. And that's, that's the industry way of getting, getting a degree. So do you ever get tired looking at diamonds? Um, yeah, well, definitely during that time I was pretty tired (laughs) when I came, when I got home. Uh, my eyes did not appreciate it, but uh, at this point, it's it's helped me learn a, a real appreciation for the beauty of diamonds. Yeah, for sure. Well, I I'm thinking I've got so many questions to ask you, but how do we understand as consumers the the true value of a diamond? Like, what questions should we be asking, or what should we be looking for? That's a that's an excellent question. Uh, you know, people often stumble onto the four C's of diamonds, which are the color, the clarity, the cut, and the carat, which are the four most basic uh, characteristics of a diamond that determine its its value and its beauty. Uh, the most important one, however, is what I we would call the fifth C, which is certificate. Um, that is an independent certificate that tells you exactly what those first the four qualities are. Because otherwise, you as a consumer have no way of knowing what you're looking at. Right. You know, the the quality differences between an expensive diamond and a diamond that's flawed that is you know far less valuable are almost impossible to detect unless you're an expert. Okay, so the certificate is that is that something when we're out shopping for a diamond? Is that something we're we're asking for? And if we have that, like, what does that actually mean? So the certificates are from the. The manufacturers usually send the diamonds to independent laboratories. Uh, you should go look for GIA or AGS certified diamonds. Those are the top laboratories. And what they'll do is they'll print a report that goes with that diamond that tells you exactly what color that diamond is, exactly what clarity grade that is. And the color and clarity determine the price of the diamond. A higher quality diamond is far more rare and far more desirable, so the prices are going to be exponentially higher. Uh, you don't want to go in and have a salesperson try to tell you that the quality of a diamond is, you know, very high and you pay what you think is a good price for that very high quality diamond. When in reality, there was a flaw that you didn't notice and you ended up overpaying for that diamond. I would imagine that that happens probably a lot more, right? That That's more common that we end up paying for something that we think is maybe something great, or we don't even know what we're looking for. And uh, we're kind of walking away with a diamond that we paid a lot more for than really it was actually worth. Yeah, absolutely. It happens far too often. Uh, it's devastating. We, we have readers who we're working with for weeks or even months trying to find them a perfect diamond. We've been going over uh, you know, a million options for them. And then they send us an email saying they were in a store and they found an incredible value and they thought they got the deal of the century. And we have to put them point out that, hey, there was this little thing that they didn't notice. Um, It wasn't certified by GIA. It was certified by some sketchy laboratory that inflates the quality claims. And you actually really overpaid for that diamond. Ouch. (laughs) Is there anything you can do once you've you've overpaid or just you bought that diamond and that's just how the story shakes out? Uh, Unfortunately, most of the physical retailers out there uh, do not offer cash refunds. They might be willing to exchange, but if it's the same person who scammed you or or screwed you on the first go around, your chances of actually getting a good deal the second time around aren't that great either. 
Um, that's one of the reasons we actually recommend buying online over buying in a physical physical store. Yeah, you you brought that up, the idea of buying online. Something about it to me feels scarier as a consumer because I can't actually touch or physically see the diamond. But okay, tell me what I'm getting wrong. Like what what's the benefit of of buying online? Truthfully, that's that's become a genera- generational thing in some ways. Uh, people are far more comfortable buying online nowadays. When you're when you're looking for a diamond, there's so many different uh, details that you need to be aware of. And when you walk into a store and you're looking at a diamond, and there's a salesperson who's earning a commission off that sale, giving you the the hard push. It's very hard to keep all of that information in your head and figuring out what's important. They're going to throw numbers at you. They're going to use, you know, lots of different synonyms for beautiful and, and, and just blind you. And listen, you put any diamond under a, a harsh UV light and, or, you know, harsh fluorescent lights, and it's going to sparkle. It's going to look amazing. And when you're buying online, you have the luxury of just sitting at your desk, taking time. There's no salespeople pushing you. You can go to a site like ours, which is independent. You know, we have the partners that we recommend, but we'll answer any questions. We have, we have objective, you know, information about what qualities you should be looking for in a diamond. You take your time and you buy from one of the legitimate companies out there. They all have 30 day return policies. They'll even most, in most cases, they'll even pay for the return shipping. It's just, it's hassle free. Um, there is this idea that you would want to put it on your finger, that you'd want to feel it. Uh, but I would I would compare that to let's say buying shoes. Right. People said that about shoes twenty years ago, and look at Zappos. Look at how successful they've been. So, uh, and it's been the same in the diamond industry. Blue Nile started around nineteen ninety nine. Uh, they've been the the market leader. There's been many other companies that have come up since them. James Allen, most notably, is 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 the other major one. Both of those companies are you know they're doing hundreds of millions of dollars of business a year. And it's, you know, people are more comfortable with it, especially in the last uh, couple of years with COVID, uh, being comfortable purchasing online has certainly accelerated in the, you know, in the general population. For sure. So is, is your advice then to maybe stick with some of these bigger online retailers that are a little bit more well-known versus maybe going with, I don't know, some random Google search that we find where maybe the diamond looks a little less expensive but in actuality, maybe we're not getting the, the quality that we would with one of these bigger retailers. Well, I, as long as a company is a legitimate, uh, a legitimate retailer and you can verify that, you know, you can see history of companies online if you do enough research uh, and they have a return policy, they're, you know, you're able to buy from anywhere. But the amount of money that you're going to save, uh, James Allen and Blue Nile actually have quite an innovative business model. They they don't own their inventory. Everything that they have is listed virtually from the wholesalers. Hmm. This allows them to run on razor thin margins. Now, a smaller company might be able to shave a couple of percent off of that price, but they're not really going to, you're not going to save 20, 30%. So if it were me doing that shopping and if money was really tight, I may consider it. But I prefer to go to with the company that has the the long term reputation, and nice. you know that has that history of customer service, has the history of you know their their jewelry is fantastic. They do a great job assembling your your ring, so that would be my recommendation. But there are plenty of other acceptable companies out there. That's interesting. So the razor thin margins. Is that just because it's such a competitive business or what makes those margins so small for those companies? Well, at the beginning, I mean, that was their, that was their way to break into the market, to, to own a, a retailer. Um, which, which area of the country do you live in? Uh, I'm in the East Coast. Yeah, so in the East Coast, if you, if you want to have a, a, a shop, let's say on 47th Street in Manhattan, or if you want to be on Walnut Street in Philadelphia, for example, those are two pretty well-known uh, diamond industry, you know, diamond locations for consumers. The cost of rent there is exorbitant. You're right. paying for salespeople to be in the store at all times. You have to own two to three million dollars worth of inventory just to fill up your display cases. Most wow. people don't have two or three million dollars worth of money lying around, so they're paying 
they're paying a, a bank to, to float that, that inventory. So all of these things force them to have higher margins. Uh, it used to be a physical retailer would keystone their, their products, which means that they're making 100% profit. Now, they're not actually making 100% net profit, but they need that to cover the cost of their, of their, of their operations. An online retailer doesn't own the diamonds that they're, that, that they're selling. When you click purchase, they have, a, they have a partnership with these wholesalers. The diamond comes directly from that wholesaler, ships to Blue Nile overnight, and then they send it out to you the next day. Or James Allen does the same thing. So they don't have to own all that inventory. They don't have to have a storefront. And they're able to do an incredible amount of business with a much lower overhead. So that just allows them to cut the margins compared to a physical retailer. Makes sense. Absolutely. A hundred percent. I mean, it's, it's the reason the online market has just taken off, right? Everything is about, everything's about e-commerce. Okay. So uh, is there a way that all of us listening, let's say we're, we're going out this holiday season, we're going to be shopping for a dime or we're shopping online. How do we figure out how much we should actually pay for a diamond? Is there is there anything that can help kind of guide us? You know, a site like ours, we, we have a price calculator that will tell you what the average going rate online for a specific diamond would be. Um, so it's 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 pretty easy to tell how much a diamond is worth, but trying to determine how much you spend on a diamond for a gift or an engagement ring, you know. De Beers has done a fantastic marketing job making you feel like it's necessary to do so. And you're supposed to spend <laughs> three months salary now, uh, which is, you know, absurd. insane. That, that is just that is just marketing. Uh, you do not need to spend all that money on diamonds. You don't have to buy diamonds. They're a luxury purchase. I obviously love diamonds. I think they're incredible. Um, but you should be viewing them as a luxury purchase, not as you know, some sort of stepping stone that you're required to purchase in your path towards marriage and building a traditional life. Uh, that's That's been one of the best marketing jobs that's been done in the last hundred years was De Beers, a diamond is forever. A hundred percent. And then anything that you feel is associated with getting married or getting engaged, for some reason, it's almost like we become super irrational with money yeah. and we start spending money we don't have because, yeah, we're playing into these societal kind of messaging or scarcity, whatever it might be, that we have to have the biggest or the best or spend the most money. And it's just, you're right, it's crazy. It's like it it just has sort of indoctrinated us. Yeah. And, and listen, there are plenty of ways to get a beautiful diamond for, you know, for a lower price than what you may be pressured to spend. There, there are so many ways that you can save on the margins there that you're getting a, a beautiful ring that nobody can tell the difference uh, between that and a more expensive ring. And really, I, I don't see the purpose of uh, spending that, that extra money. I mean, if you want to get a larger diamond, of course, you're going to have to spend more. But there, there are plenty of ways to, to get better bang for your buck. Yeah. So, so what are some of those ways? So uh, earlier I mentioned the the four C's, which are cut, carat, color, and clarity. So those are the four major characteristics of a diamond. You know, how big it is, how uh, how well it's cut, which would mean how sparkly and how brilliant it's going to be. And then color and clarity are are grades that are that are referring to imperfections in the diamond. Color refers to, you know, a perfect a perfect uh, decolor diamond is perfectly clear. There's no yellowish tint to the diamond. And then as you get lower in the color grades, you'll get into you'll get into slightly warmish or yellowish tint to the diamond. And clarity is referring to the the inclusions that are within the diamond. And as they get larger, you get a lower clarity grade. Now for us, we look at those two as opportunities because most people can't tell the difference between let's say an F color diamond and an I color diamond. But the price difference between the two could be 25% or even wow. more. So the same goes with, with clarity. It doesn't matter if there's an imperfection in the diamond. It only matters if you notice it when you're looking at your ring. So our goal is always to get as close to the line where you don't see those imperfections. And that lets you maximize the size and the brilliance of the diamond. I like it. I mean, yeah. it's just it's just being smart with your dollars, smart with your purchase. And you're right. Most people wouldn't even looking at a diamond, even if you looked at it every single day, notice the difference between some of these um, 
you know, some of these different characteristics. And, and yeah, I mean, listen, we, we've done uh, on the street tests. We've asked people, we've compared color and, and clarity, you know, a lower, a lower color and lower clarity diamond to a large, to, to a higher quality diamond, and they could not tell the difference. And when we asked them, which one would you rather have, this one for $3,000 or the higher quality diamond for 5000 every person said, you know, they'd prefer to spend the $3,000 because <laughs> they couldn't tell the difference. Yeah. And yeah. Another tip would be to try to avoid uh, brands when it, comes to, when it comes to purchasing diamonds. Uh, so we have to say no to Tiffany then, right? <laughs> That would be my recommendation. If we try- <laughs> Tiffany's is an incredible company. Uh, the cachet that they've that they've built over decades is incredible. And that listen, buying a diamond is an emotional is an emotional process, and giving somebody a diamond a piece of diamond jewelry is an emotional process. So I understand the value that seeing that little blue box from Tiffany adds to the equation, but all of that investment that they've put into their branding. Uh, costs money, and they're going to want to profit off of that. Tiffany's diamonds are beautiful, but there is nothing unique to them compared to diamonds that you can find at any other retailer. A perfectly cut diamond is a perfectly cut diamond. Whether you're buying it at Costco, which happens to have decent diamonds, they're you know really surprising, but they do. Um, or a company like Blue Nile or James Allen that we that we love. The diamond is going to look identical to a diamond from Tiffany as long as you follow the right guidelines when it comes to cut parameters and color and clarity. So I just don't see the value in in going after those brand names. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet. Finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps. But I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. Gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. I'm Samantha Cole, host of the new season of Understood, The Pornhub Empire. 
Over the course of four episodes, I'll tell you how a horny YouTube knockoff in Canada came to dominate the porn world, only to shatter their cheeky reputation in a massive scandal. The Pornhub Empire is a new season of Understood from the CBC. Available now wherever you get your podcasts. From Foreign Policy, I'm Rena Nainen, the host of The Hidden Economics of Remarkable Women. Over the past few years, we've looked at how women around the world are changing societal norms to increase their economic power. This season, we're focusing completely on girls, how they're pushing for a brighter, more powerful future, and what the rest of us can do to set them up for success. Join us for stories about girl power, young women who are fighting for change, to give themselves a chance to live a life of their own choosing. That's season six of The Hidden Economics of Remarkable Women, wherever you get your podcasts. So when you're giving somebody a diamond who really wants a Tiffany, you're just saying like, hey, baby, you're getting a better diamond here. <laughs> I can go out and buy you the little blue box. Exactly. And listen, we're, we're talking about an emotional, an emotional equation. And if that little blue box is going to matter to somebody, so maybe it is worth spending twice as much. But, you know, if, if it were me doing that, uh, I would hope that my significant other would be happier <laughs> with the better value that looks identical on their hand. Yeah, that's such a great tip. You know, I every time I go to Costco, I walk past the, the jewelry area and I'm like, they have some really nice stuff. But I've always wondered, like, is this good? Is this just at a discount? So uh, it's good to know now that they actually do have some some quality stuff. Their their quality is excellent. They don't have much of a selection. And being perfectly honest, you're not going to get any s customer service there. It's not like they right. have full time, you know, proper jewelers in house. So, you know, it's not. The, I don't think it's the greatest place to purchase from. But there are plenty of Costco diehards out there that would <laughs> love to buy everything in their house from Costco. So I, you're not going wrong purchasing from there. So tell me a little bit about. You you worked in the industry for, for all of these years, and I know you're really exposed to kind of the dark side of the market. We've talked about a couple things. Would love to hear anything else you want to share on that. But you were really just sick of consumers being taken advantage of, and that's really why you started uh, the Diamond Pro. So tell me a little bit about that, that evolution process to deciding, okay, I want to start a company, a, a website where really... It's it's for the consumer and really helping the consumer make good decisions. Yeah, you know when you're working on the manufacturing side, so we keep you know we kept referring to the margins and and profit when it comes to it because diamonds are a business. Maybe as a consumer, you're looking at it as a beautiful product, but for us, it's it, it's going to be profit margins. That's that's all people care about, and it's incredibly competitive. You know, we were mentioning before how. These online retailers have have managed to cut a lot of the margins, so that has really squeezed, you know, really squeezed the end retailers and forced them to lower their margins as well. At the same time, globalization has really, you know, allowed people to get, you know, the retailers in America can now go directly to the cutters in India or Israel and get excellent value, and it's really squeezed the margins at at, at every angle and. What you see is a lot of people instead of trying to instead of trying to wait, find a way to build value through branding and through customer service, they're going to resort to some less favorable tactics by trying to give somebody a lower quality diamond that they can't really they don't really understand that it's lower quality, and this mm -hmm. way they're able to charge a higher price or they're able to charge the price that somebody would normally pay, but they're getting rid of a far less valuable diamond in the process. And when I was working on the manufacturing side, that's okay. I'm, I'm selling B2B. So it doesn't matter. I can try to sell whatever I want to sell to an expert in the field. And it's their job. It's their responsibility to you know protect their own business and make the best deal for their company. I don't have any qualms about that. But then I would see how that would work at the end of the line, the way the consumer is going to eventually get tricked by one of these less legitimate certificates that are inflating the quality claims, or they're going to see diamonds that have been artificially enhanced, and they don't really realize that that makes the diamond like worth nothing at right. that point. 
And they just think they're getting a great deal and they're getting a big diamond for a budget that they, they would have never dreamed of. But in reality, they're getting something that's virtually worthless. So it really disheartened me. And uh, my business partner and I, and I, we decided to start Truth About Diamonds about 11 years ago and really give people all the information and all the tools that are necessary so that they can navigate this process on their own. And now we've rebranded to Diamond Pro. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about, so you mentioned there's a calculator on your site. Like, What are some of the other resources that you have for us if we're, if we're in the market shopping for a diamond? So uh, we have plenty of resources. We have as much educational content as you can, as you can consume, as much as you want to consume uh, when buying a diamond. We, have an art, we built an artificial intelligence model that will look at the images on companies like Blue Nile and James Allen, and they will tell you which of those diamonds are going to look good in a ring. Because wow. we were mentioning before that there are imperfections and there's uh, there, there are lower clarity grade diamonds that are better value, but some of those are going to have noticeable inclusions, like there might be a big black dot in the middle. And we've developed an artificial intelligence model that will look at those diamonds for you and pick the one that's the best value. That is pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we've, we've I mean, there's. Hard. It's, it took. Uh, we we looked at almost two hundred thousand images of diamonds. Myself and, <laughs> and my team members here, we we graded those diamonds to teach the the computer model. That is so fascinating. I love it. I mean, what a great resource. I mean. Yeah. You know, we, we, because if we're talking about diamonds being a luxury purchase, and yet it's something that, at least from a female speaking, most of us want at least one diamond. So, and I, I love the idea of let's be intentional with our dollars and let's spend them very wisely. And what an amazing tool to be able to help you figure out what it will look like. Is this a good diamond? And I think it just, for me, it gives a little peace of mind in my purchase because we are usually spending you know, at least a thousand dollars on a diamond. Yeah. I mean, most people on our site are spending four to five thousand dollars. Right. I was gonna ask you, is that is that pretty much the the kind of standard amount that most people are spending? I I think this the the average in the United States is significantly lower than that, but the people who are making an effort to educate themselves and you know they're they're making a larger purchase. Uh the some of the top retailers in America for jewelry are still Walmarts and lower quality places like that that are selling $300 engagement rings. So the average is lower, but once you get into the, the educated consumer area, the people who are doing that research, it's probably about four to 5,000 is the average. And I'm curious, is there a, a season or a time of the year that's better to buy a diamond or it doesn't really matter? You know, it ebbs and flows. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the, the margins are incredibly thin one way or the other. Right now, it's the holiday season and most of the retailers are offering big discounts on the settings, but that's a very small percentage of, of the actual overall cost because there's not really much room for, for lowering the price on diamonds in general. So I... I wouldn't recommend waiting for a specific time where you might find a sale that'll save you $100. It's such an arduous uh, process to pick out the perfect diamonds that once you find that diamond, you might as well get it because you might lose out on that diamond and you're going to end up with a you know, worse value right. trying to wait for the time where there's a sale that you can save $100. Okay, smart. I like that advice. And then what about, I mean, I know myself and so many of my friends love the idea of maybe we have our ring for a while and then maybe life's getting a little bit better for us and we we thinking about upgrading our ring or doing something different. Is there any value uh, for our diamond, like selling our diamond or trading it in? Or is it just we bought that diamond and it had that use and now we're on to, to something new? Uh, diamonds absolutely have value. Uh at the end of the day, you're a consumer, so you're paying for that retail experience. If you turn around today, you buy a diamond today and you turn around and try to sell it, you're going to lose probably 30 40%. That said, oh, wow. historically, diamonds have increased in value every decade for the last, I don't know, seven or eight, since I've been in the industry, since I've read about the industry. Historically, that's they they've increased in value. So... 
it's a little different than most of your luxury purchases. You know, if you purchase a Prada bag, it's not really going to retain its value and it's never going to increase in value unless you get really lucky that it's some sort of rare, you know, rare piece of uh, piece of luxury item that's that's going to be sought after in two or three decades. Typically, when you buy a luxury good, it's worthless on the resale market. So diamonds do have that value. I wouldn't call them an investment, but they definitely retain that value. And if you wanted to upgrade, a lot of the companies that sell diamonds, they'll give you the full value that you purchased for it. And as long as you're getting something more expensive. Mm, I like that. Okay. Right. Yeah. So we got, we got, we got to really upgrade then. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember the first time I heard somebody doing that, they, they, they try to couch it in different language and they say, we want to reset our engagement ring, which means they want a larger diamond, but they want to get their spouses and, you know, caught before they do that. <laughs> oh, the language. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm curious just for my, my own knowledge, I'm sure there's somebody listening who's curious about this as well. You kind of talked about this a little bit, but tell me a little bit about like the diamond mining industry. Like, where, where, where do most diamonds come from? And what is that? What is that process like? Uh, well, the diamond mining process is is pretty varied at this point. Uh, you know, let's say in the 1980s, the overwhelming majority of diamonds were coming from uh, De Beers and their mines in in Africa. Uh, at, nowadays, Russia has a large large mining options in in Siberia. Australia has some. Brazil has some. Uh, Canada. Uh, mines diamonds up up north, uh, I believe near Yellowknife, and it's it's varied depending where you are. There's different ways that sometimes you have to dig deep down, and sometimes they come out through the rivers and you sift through it, kind of like gold in the in the 1800s in California. Right. So it's uh, it all depends on the area. Interesting. Yeah, I, I actually went to South Africa about gosh now about 10, 12 years ago, and. Yeah bought a ring. And when I was flying home, there was a, a whole bunch of not so great stuff that happened. My luggage got lost. Um, the credit cards were bouncing because I was in Johannesburg as a layover where I didn't think I was going to be. And so my credit cards were going crazy. My cell phone charger was in my bag and the bag was lost. I mean, you just name it. It was like, you know, the most horrible situation, but I was wearing this ring that I bought. So when we were flying back to the US. I was like, well, I'm going to be a good ethical person. I'm going to claim this ring. And little did I know I'm going to owe taxes on this ring when I come yeah. back in, in the US. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, my credit cards are bouncing. I don't have any cash. I don't have my stuff with me. I, don't, I mean, it was just like the craziest scenario. When I got back to the US, there had been a big storm in, in DC when we landed and it knocked out all of the computer systems. So everything was just kind of manual. And when I finally got up to the window and the lady told me, I don't know, I owed $700 or something in taxes, I just looked at her in sheer panic. I'm like, explain my whole story to her that I'm like, you can have the ring. I'm okay with it at this point. <laughs> and uh, she was like, you know what? Uh, all our systems are down. Just just consider this your lucky day. Go on. you know." And and I thought, oh my gosh, I was just trying to to buy a ring and, and, be, and be ethical. But yeah, every time I, I talk about diamonds, like I kind of go flashbacks to to that story. But it's it's crazy in 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 South Africa at least. I mean, all the places you could buy diamonds, it just it felt like Starbucks here, like everywhere. Yeah. I mean that's it's it's a very unique experience. I think that's that's really targeted for 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 the tourist trade there. Yes. Uh, but you know, there are places in India as well. I, I was just traveling in, in uh uh, doing secret shopping a couple of years ago and Singapore and Hong Kong, they had some diamond areas that were just uh, outrageous. The amount of stores that were there. Uh, two of the major retailers in Hong Kong at one point, when I got out of the, the Metro there, I can see eight different locations for the same retailer <laughs> in eyesight. It was, it was more, more than any Starbucks I've ever seen. And I, you know, I used to work in Manhattan. There was a star. There were at least three Starbucks within, you know, twenty seconds of my office. So it's it's interesting the way that works. And Forty Seventh Street in in Manhattan is similar to that as well. 
All right. So I want to leave listeners with some really actionable tips or takeaways. So if if I'm headed out either in person or online this this holiday season to buy a diamond, like what's the most important thing or things I should be thinking about or looking for? Well, if you're shopping in person, the the number one thing that you need to keep in mind is that you don't have to buy right now. Don't feel pressured. If somebody's pressuring you and if a, a deal seems too good to be true, it is too good to be true. That's just the reality of the diamond industry. When you think you're getting a steal, you're usually getting scammed. And, you know, when shopping online, just, just make sure that something is GIA and AGS certified. Also, when you're shopping in person as well. Um, and, you know, double check. Even if, even if you want to buy in person, if you're sitting in that store, go online, go to one of those websites, go to our website, diamonds.pro, or go to James Allen or, or Blue Nile, and look at a similar diamond, just so you get an idea of the price range that you should be paying. Of course, it's going to be a little more expensive because you're paying for that in-person experience, but at least you have an idea uh, what you should be spending. All right, Michael. Well, this has been so, so informative. I'd love for you to tell everyone again where they could find you and connect with the Diamond Pro. Yeah, uh, you can find us on diamonds.pro. Uh, that's where we have all of our educational content. We also have quite a bit of uh, video content on YouTube. Uh, we're on Facebook. Just look for us uh, for Diamond Pro. Wow. I don't know about you, but I think this was one of the most educational conversations. I have certainly bought diamonds before in my past, and I certainly had no idea what I was doing. I mean, I tried to understand the four C's, but when you're looking at a diamond and you're making a purchase, it just somehow, I don't know, your brain goes to mush. So I love what Michael shared. I also love feeling free enough to be able to purchase a diamond online and know that I have resources like Michael's site, The Diamond Pro, to really help me figure out and make sure I'm making a really smart, intentional decision with my dollars because it is a lot of money that we're spending. And I also really enjoyed Michael's advice about not buying into the social norms, that we don't have to save up for three months or six months salary in order to afford a diamond, that there are a lot of choices out there that are just not going to bankrupt us. So if you enjoyed this episode, do me a favor, share it with a friend and family members, because I think everybody needs to know about this information, how to shop smart for your diamond. As always, you can head to the show notes for all the links to our episode guests, as well as our amazing episode sponsors who make this podcast possible. I'll see you back here in a few days for a brand new episode. Hey, you. Yes, you. Before you go, we want to say thanks for listening to this episode of Millennial Money. For all the links, tags, and ads you've heard on today's episode, check out the show notes or go to mmoneypodcast.com, where you'll find more episodes to share with your friends. While you're at it, leave us a review and make sure to subscribe wherever you listen so you don't miss out on all the money tips and tricks that will take you from a millennial regular to a millennial money expert. See you back here in a few days with a fresh new episode. Rakuten helps you be a smarter shopper and save money on just about everything. People all have things they need to buy, whether it's home essentials or a self-care treat just for you. With Rakuten, you get cash back on clothes, groceries, travel, and much, much more. Even better, you can stack cash back on top of other deals like store sales and credit card points. In case you're wondering, the stores on Rakuten are the ones you know and love, and lots of cool ones waiting to be discovered, including Target, Lowe's, and Nike. When it comes to savvy shopping and saving money, Rakuten is a no-brainer. It's free and easy to join. Just go to Rakuten.com now or download the Rakuten app today. That's R-A-K-U-T-E-N.